Robots get such a bad rap in movies and books and stuff. Ours should be cute and friendly. No way. Cuddly robots are boring. Ours should be edgy. Or maybe before we figure out what this robot looks like, we should agree on what it actually does. The competition at this robotics event is gonna be fierce. How could we make our robot a breakout star? We still can't agree on anything. We think that kids and grown-ups with kids will love a robot that cleans your room. We'll win for sure. And we know that a robot that helps you pick out an outfit based on the weather will reduce the stress of getting ready for school, thus boosting academic performance. The judges will go crazy for it. If we don't have a decision by next week's meeting, we'll have to withdraw from the competition. Sorry, guys. Why are you so stubborn? <laughs> we need an impartial tiebreaker. I know where we can find one, or two. Your idea of a 30 alarm emergency is very different than ours. Clearly you've never dealt with robotics judge number four from the Clinton Charter School. Ugh. To be honest, the idea of trying to choose sides makes my stomach hurt. Ow! See? Don't worry. We know exactly who you need to talk to to settle this. Let's go. Gets me every single time. Aha! These must be the visitors with the, what did you call it, Cammy? A mind-blowing, universe-changing problem? You totally sold it, girl. I'm proud. Yes, Professor Seymour. This is Kaylee and Reese. They're having a robot-related disagreement and need a tiebreaker. As Confetti's most awesome inventor, not just because you're my uncle, Dev and I thought you could help them decide what to do. Hopefully without it hurting your stomach. Ow! Professor Seymour, this place is amazing! Thank you so much for helping us! <gasps> shredders! How did you get one of Evil Queen Frivol's robot shredders? She never lets them out of her sight. I didn't get a shredder. I invented it. Queen Frivol took my delightful little invention and turned it into a paper-munching monster. When my daughters were little, they loved glitter. There was so much glitter. 20 years later, I'm still finding it everywhere. <laughs> I was making glitter from shiny metallic paper all the time, so I made this little guy to help me out. The girls named it the Glitter Bot. One day, Queen Frivol came to the shop because her electric crown polisher was broken. She saw the girls using the Glitter Bot and begged for one to make party decorations. I never should have trusted her. Queen Frivol reprogrammed the robot's computer. Instead of making glitter, it went around shredding and destroying everything in the land of confetti. Then she figured out how to make her own shredders. And built a bunch of biting bug-eyed bots to terrorize confetti. Perfectly said, Dev. I never imagined that the same robot could do happy, joyful things and mean, destructive things. Now, where were we? Ah, yes. Deciding the fate of the universe. I mean, robots. So you and Queen Frivol had very different ideas about what you wanted the robot to do. And that one robot was programmed to do two different things. Well, one of them was pretty terrible, but still. But our one robot could do two different and awesome things. Oh, sounds like my tie-breaking skills are no longer needed. Phew, my stomach's feeling better already. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Guys. There's a way for us to make our robot so it does both of the things we want it to. Instead of focusing on the output, what the robot does, it's all about the information we give to it, the input. We just need to program it with the info it needs to make decisions. Like how to pick up different objects and where to put them. And what weather conditions match different types of clothes. Can you hand me that temperature sensor, please? Do you think the cloud bin's wide enough? We need to increase the angle so it opens enough to pick up bigger objects, like a dirty dish. <laughs> Not that I'd ever have those in my room, of course.
Do you remember what year it was when our families took that trip to Magic Kitty Mountain? Edie was still a baby. I'm putting together a video montage for my mom's birthday, and I really want to use that clip of you and me on the roller coaster. Is it weird that I'm in your family birthday videos? Side note, do you think this cozy will fit your mom's travel mug? Reese, it would be super weird if you weren't in the video. Aha! Here it is. Huh. Edie looks a lot older here than I remembered. No! Uh-oh. Edie, can you come in here? Is there anything you'd like to confess, Edie? Anything involving my completely off-limits to you, computer? Go easy on your sister, Kay. She didn't mean it. Edie, does this look like our family vacation to Magic Kitty Mountain to you? The one I was going to use for Mom's birthday video montage? I think so. Isn't that Reese right there? Okay, okay, I confess. I thought the computer would make my seal project better because you and Reese always make such awesome stuff on it. All you had to do was ask, Edie. This is the only copy of the video I have and Mom's birthday is tomorrow. Kaylee, let's pause. Edie just said that we inspired her. We are her role models. <sighs> we need to savor this moment. You mean this moment when a treasured family keepsake was ruined by seal memes? I feel you, Edie. Sometimes when I'm having a hard time coming up with ideas, it helps to talk to someone. Hey, you and I can be inspo buddies. What do you think? What's an inspo buddy? Only the best thing in the world. An inspo buddy is someone who makes you feel creative. Someone you can bounce even the craziest ideas around with. Someone who makes you feel like you can do anything. So, what do you say, Edie? Are we inspo buddies or what? Yes. And I'm really sorry for ruining Mom's birthday video. Really sorry. Poor Edie. I know. You can give your mom this coffee mug cozy. I can make her something else. You're sweet, Reese, but I'll figure something else out. I'm more worried about keeping Edie off my computer so she doesn't ruin something else. Oops, sorry, Mom, but your wedding video is now Edie's hamster eating a carrot for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I think we need a change of scenery. Maybe you'll get birthday present inspiration in confetti. Or inspo for how to protect computers from seal crazy sisters. Hey, Cammy. Now that's some serious lemonade stand security. This lemonade is made from Dev's family's top secret recipe. It's been passed down from generation to generation for decades. Dev wants to enter his lemonade into the Confetti's Coolest Cooks competition, but the Shredders keep trying to steal the recipe for Queen Frivol. She's going to pretend it's hers and try to win the contest. <gasps> the recipe is locked inside this safe. Really? Who would steal a recipe for lemonade? Aren't there only like three ingredients in it? Ah! Before you judge, why don't you try a taste of the Chada family's legendary lemonade? Let me squeeze a fresh lemon for you. Ow, 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 I got lemon juice in my eye! Ow! Don't you mean you got legendary lemon juice in your eye, Dev? You have no idea how hard it's been trying to keep this recipe away from those sneaky shredders. Queen Frivol is such a fraud. She doesn't care how she wins this contest. She'll lie, cheat, and steal to get her hands on a shiny trophy. Ew, Dev. What exactly is the secret ingredient in your lemonade? Huh? What the? Why did the napkin turn brown? I bet the shredder sabotaged it. Keep it together, Dev. Kaylee, remember in science class last year they showed us how to make invisible ink with lemon juice? Oh yeah! You can't see the writing, but when you put lighter heat on the lemon juice, the acid makes it change color and the words appear. The heat from the sun turned the lemon juice on the napkin brown. <gasps> Wait! I'm having my own light bulb moment. Dev can use lemon juice, also known as invisible ink, to write the lemonade recipe down. Right, that way if the shredders ever did get a hold of it, there'd be nothing for them to see. Thank you for preserving the Chada family's legacy. I can't tell you. Ow, I still have lemon juice on my fingers and now it's in my eye again, ow. On that note, we should get home. Let us know how the contest goes, Dev. Bye, Cammy. I can't believe this is my best idea for keeping Edie away from my computer. Ugh. Well, you know what they say, Kay, when life gives you lemons. Yeah, yeah, make lemon juice. Reese, this is why you're my inspo buddy. Sometimes keeping stuff safe is about the locks you can't see, 
like Invisible Ink or lemon juice on your fingertips. I'm totally with you, Inspo Buddy. Let's get to work. This fingerprint scanner will keep Edie from being able to get into my computer. I'll scan my fingerprint and upload the picture. Even though we can't see them, every finger has its own unique pattern of lines. The computer measures the distance and angle between all the lines in my fingerprint and gives it a code number. It's actually even safer than a super long password. And since no two people in the world have the same fingerprints, if anyone besides you tries to scan their finger, <clears throat> Edie, <clears throat> the computer won't let her sign on because the prints don't match. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Kaylee, backpack. Guess who won Confetti's coolest cook contest with their lemonade? Oh no, Deb, you got lemon juice in your eye again. Don't worry, I got it made in the shade. Hey, did you ever think of a new present for your mom? I'm still going to make her that birthday video montage, but I'm sad it won't have that one of you, me, and Edie at Magic Kitty Mountain. Come on in, Edie. Love that you knocked. I'm sorry again about mom's present. I know she would have loved it, but I uh, made you guys something. Maybe you'll be less mad at me? 